Sergei Lavrov, welcome to Hard Talk. The world was deeply alarmed last week by the prospect of a direct military confrontation between the United States and Russia. How close do you believe we came to that? Well, I don't think that was very close. Uh, I believe it was uh, a situation created by uh, very reckless behavior of our Western colleagues uh, who accused the Syrian government uh, and thus as a lice of the Syrian government in applying chemical weapons against civilians uh, without waiting for OPCW to inspect the place. Uh, actually, at the moment when OPCW was physically ready to move from Lebanon to Syria, uh, they executed these strikes. Um, as the representatives of our military explained, the deconflicting channel uh, was, has been engaged all the time. So to be clear about that, without using jargon, the US and allied forces gave you indications of how the strikes were to be carried out and you gave them some indication I, that you I, would not retaliate? I prefer, I prefer not to get into the nitty gritty of this military to military channels. Uh, th there is a channel existing between the Russian and the United States military, uh, both between the capitals and on the ground in Syria. And uh, I believe the military discussed uh, and continue to discuss this and other things very professionally. They understand each other and they understand maybe uh, better than anyone else the danger of this kind of adventure. But Mr. Lavrov, this crisis is not over, is it? It depends on those who invented the crisis. Well, it's quite clear from words used by your own diplomats. Your ambassador to the United States said there would be consequences for the strikes that we saw. Vladimir Putin called it an illegal act of aggression. So the world wants well, to know what is Russia going to do now? That's a statement of fact. And consequences certainly would be, there would be consequences. Uh, we uh, lose basically the last remnants of trust to our Western friends, uh, who prefer to operate on the basis of very uh, weird logic. Proof is in the punishment. They punish first, like they did in Salisbury. Then they wait for Scotland Yard to finalize the investigation. They punish first in Duma, in Syria, and then they wait for the inspectors of OPCW to visit the place and to inspect. Punishment, I mean, proof by the punishment is what uh, is being applied by the Troika of Western countries. Well, I want to talk to you about the detail of the cases you've mentioned, both in Duma and the Skripal case as well. But before we get there, I just want to continue the idea of the diplomatic uh, relationship today. Now, the U.S. Uh, ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley, said U.S. forces remain locked and loaded. When you hear that kind of language, how do you respond? Well, I think that they have to put their own house together in Washington uh, because we understand that this kind of statements could be made either by the commander-in-chief uh, or by the military. And as I said, the military of the United States and of the Russian Federation maintain the deconflicting channel on Syria and uh, this is some uh, kind of confidential information. You say there is no trust. You mean zero trust now between said, Russia and the United States. we are losing the last remnants of trust, which is not yet zero. Not yet zero. I just wonder, on the most basic level, you're the foreign minister of Russia. When you wake up in the morning and you read on Twitter the words of the United States president and commander in chief saying, in essence, get ready, Russia, our nice, new, smart missiles are coming. What do you make of that? Well, I make of that that the President of the United States uh, writes his tweet. And your response to those tweets is? Well, the proof of the pudding is in the eating, as you know. So we waited for this smart, new, uh, what else was there, uh, nice missiles uh, to be used at the attack. And we uh, calculated that two-thirds of them didn't reach the target because they were intercepted. There's absolutely no evidence for that, is there? 
while the military uh, of the Russian Federation, the Ministry of Defense of the Russian Federation, presented its assessment, and it's available for the professional discussion. We'll get back to the credibility of the information provided by all the sides in this uh, crisis later. But for now, continuing with the diplomatic thread, Theresa May, British Prime Minister, Emmanuel Macron, President of France, both made it very, very clear that the intervention we saw was all about degrading and deterring the Syrian government's chemical weapons threat. It was not about an intervention in the Syrian war, and it was certainly not about regime change in Damascus. So do you, the, do so, you accept so, that? So they said. Do you accept it? I, we don't accept this. What we accept, I mean, you, you have hard talk, you know. We, have, we want hard facts. And highly likely is really ridiculous. And the policies of our Western friends... Uh, Sorry, when you say highly likely, you mean the assessment that chemical weapons were used in Douma by the Assad government forces? No, I said, I said highly likely as a new uh, invention of the British uh, diplomacy to describe why they punish people. Because these people are highly likely guilty. Uh, like in, you know, in Ellis in Wonderland, Lewis Carroll, when he described a trial, and when they discovered that the jury could be uh, engaged, and the king said, uh, let's, let's ask the jury, and the queen shouted, no jury, sentence first, verdict afterwards. That's, that's the logic of uh, highly likely. Well, that's what you say. Let, let's get into the detail of what happened in Duma, but let's do it by first asking a very basic question. Russia opposes the use of chemical weapons, and it believes people who use those weapons should be punished. Do you, yes? Is it a question? I thought, a, I thought do you, you agree with that? I thought you were much better informed about the Russian position to, to ask the obvious. It's obvious. You agree because you've signed the relevant treaties. You are part of the international commitment to ban and eliminate the use of chemical weapons. Yes, more than that. We did eliminate our chemical weapons in 2017, which was verified by the OPCW which was welcomed by the entire uh, OPCW executive committee. Uh, and unfortunately, the United States uh, is still to, to deliver on its own obligations, which they have been postponing and postponing again and again. But if I have just stated the obvious, and it is quite clear what the Russian commitment is, then surely you must want the perpetrators of that chemical weapons attack in Duma, for which there is overwhelming evidence, to be punished. No, no, wait, wait, wait. You are jumping the, the, the facts again. Well, I don't there think is, I am. There is no proof that on the 7th of April, chemical weapons were used in Duma. But there, and there, you already, there is and proof. You already, can you, can you... Emmanuel Macron and the French have made it quite plain. They have intercepts which show helicopter movements, Syrian government helicopter mover, movements over Douma. They have pictures of gas canisters found at the site of the attack. They also have the record of the Syrian government over the last several years using chemical weapons. If you put all of that together, uh, as far I as the I French, can, the I Americans, can, the British be, are concerned... I cannot be impolite to the heads of other states. And of course I cannot be impolite to the head of my state. Uh, but you uh, quoted the uh, leaders of France and UK and the United States. And frankly speaking, uh, all the evidence which they quoted was based on the media reports and on social networks. The canisters, I saw this picture, a canister lying on a bed, and the bed is intact, and the window glass is not broken. Look, uh, you need to be a bit more serious. Can you explain to me why strike the day before OPCW is going to move there and to verify the fact which they assert was a fact? The American representative of the OPCW, the Organization for Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, says there is a deep concern that Russia has tampered with the evidence sites in Douma. Can you guarantee Wait Russia has not tampered with them? Well, yes, I can guarantee. But before you, before you, you know, it's like, it's like, uh, <laughs> it's absolutely uh, the same as was the logic of Theresa May on Salisbury. 
when we asked dozens of questions, when we requested common investigation, when we requested our presence uh, at the sample staking uh, ceremony, if you wish, she said, no, we are not going to answer any question until Russia answers all our questions. The only question which was addressed to Russia, tell us how you did it. Was it ordered by Putin, the poisoning of, of this uh, poor couple, or this was the result of you losing your control over chemical arsenals? It's, it's uh, I believe, for any intelligent person, uh, it's, uh, you know, uh, a situation well, which, which, is, which is absolutely obvious. Back, I'll, I'll, back, get ba I'll get back, back to the script. Back, files, to Duma, back to Duma. Yes. Back to Duma. And listen, uh, back to Duma and back to credibility. You have claimed that the uh, event in Duma, first of all, didn't happen. Then the message seemed to change, and you said there was some sort of event, but it was stage managed and fabricated by what you called a no, Russophobic country. The event, the event did not take place. What did take place was the stage, staged thing. We, it did not involve any chemical And weapons. you believe Britain was behind the staging of a mock chemical it's, weapons it's, attack in Duma, it's, yes? It's up to the, well, uh, the history, you know, knows uh, some experience uh, during uh, previous decades. Uh, what we do believe, and the special services, of course, can present information to the British court. Well, you say there's irrefutable proof that it was faked, it was staged. You claim the white helmet humanitarian yeah, sure, sure, first sure, responders sure, 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 were sure. involved. Where is this irrefutable proof? Well, the irrefutable proof is in the visiting of the place. And the no, no, where's Americans your irrefutable uh, proof that the white helmets backed by the British government have faked the whole thing? It's I, about credibility. Where's I, your credibility? No, no, no. I, what, what I did say was that the white helmets are known uh, to work only on the territories controlled by the uh, opposition, including Jabhat and Nusra. And the white helmets are known uh, to be uh, ringing the bell one year ago in Han Shekhun, which was a fake from the beginning to the end. And the white helmets are known to be financed among other countries yeah, that, by the United Kingdom. But foreign minister, that doesn't represent irre irrefutable proof. No, 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 at wait all. a second. Irrefutable proof of what? You said you had irrefutable proof that a Russophobic country, by which you meant Britain, had worked with these white helmets no, no, no. Why to did fake you say, and why, stage manage. Why did manage? you say that I meant Britain? Don't put your words into my mouth. I did say a country which is trying to lead the Russophobic campaign. Please quote me correctly. Otherwise, I, otherwise it, would be, it would be not very journalistic, I would say. So, speaking of irrefu irrefutable facts, the Duma event was agreed to be investigated by OPCW inspectors. They moved to Lebanon. They were told by the Syrian government that they would be immediately issued visas as they uh, come to the border. Seven hours later, the Duma and the Syrian, the Syrian territory was struck. What, what, is the, what is the reason for uh, going that way uh, one day before the inspectors were about to arrive there? If the French, the British and the American governments are right and you are wrong and uh, President Assad continues to use chemical weapons just as he did in Ghouta where he killed up to a thousand people in 2013, just as he did in Khan Shekhun last year, just as the US-led forces say he did in Duma. If they are right and you are wrong, will you agree that President Assad must be punished? <sighs> Look, uh, you don't hear me. You don't listen to me even. What I said, that the aggressive action was taken less than 24 hours before the international inspectors, including, by the way, American citizens, as far as I understand, were to visit the place where the alleged chemical attack happened. The one uh, last year event in Han Shihun happened on the 4th of April. Next morning, uh, Rex Tillerson called me and said, why don't you tell the Syrian government that they must allow inspectors to the air base uh, from which the plane allegedly carrying chemical boom uh, took off. And we told them next morning that the permission was granted. They said, no, thank you. And they struck the next day. 
when we asked when we asked the uh, OPCW to go there, they said it is not safe, uh, and that they don't need this uh, in any case because the Brits and the French uh, did have the samples. Uh, we asked the French and the Brits, uh, can you can you explain All how right. how you got the samples from the place which seems to be not very safe? Then you have contacts with the White Helmets who control the territory. And they said, this is a secret information. A Look, we, a have, we have much more facts uh, to be clar uh, clarified, and we have much more legitimate questions in response to the only one question which we hear from the Western leaders, from the Western media, the question being, why did you do this? Why did you use chemical weapons in Britain? Why do you, why do you cover acid? And so on and so forth. And then, on the basis of these assertions, you say, if you, are not, uh, if you are not right, will you punish us? It's, it's a very uh, interesting... If you're Russia's chief diplomat, if Assad is deemed by the United States, Britain, France and other countries to, you, to be using chemical weapons again, it is quite clear there will be a military response and it will be a bigger one than we have just <coughs> seen. What will that lead to? Before, will Russia retaliate? Before, before you say again, uh, you have to prove that he did use chemical weapons. Can I give you a brief... I'm just brief, asking a you a simple question effect. because the world wants to know. No, no, no. If the US, to quote Nikki Haley again, is locked and loaded, and if they deem, never mind what you think, if they deem Assad to again be using chemical weapons, it is clear they will come up with a military response bigger than the one we've just seen. What will the Russian response to that be? You know, I am not in the guessing business. What I know uh, is that when, some time ago, the three Western countries who are leading this, this uh, crazy campaign said, if Assad uses chemical weapons, then we would use force. You know, I believe that was a signal to the bad guys, including White Helmets, to stage a provocation. Now, after they struck on the 14th of April, they say again, if you do this again, we would use force again. This is another invitation to the opposition, to the extremists, to resume fighting, which they did already. They tried to attack Damascus uh, immediately after, after the strike. But my point is that the when people say Russia is responsible for the obligations of Assad under the Chemical Weapons Convention, convention uh, it's, it's a very uh, outrageous statement. A final Everybody, question. We did it together with right. the United States. A final question then on the diplomacy, then I want to move on to other matters. The US is pushing for a new UN security resolution today, which they believe is needed to send the international signal that Assad cannot be allowed to do this again. Will you work with the United States at the UN? Uh, Will you end vetoing every single resolution the US and its single, allies puts forward? Not every single resolution. We uh, if, if you mean that the, they want to resume an investigating uh, mechanism uh, which is uh, not uh, transparent, which is not independent, and which takes uh, you know, decisions on a sentence itself without a verdict from the Security Council, then no, we cannot accept this. You won't accept uh, By the way, by the way, by, right. and if, if you, know, you know what I think, please, one second, Stephen. I believe that the entire the reason for this resolution is to make it look that if uh, Russia and Syria agree to cooperate, which is impossible because of the substance, but what they want to do is to make it look that we and Syria were bombed into negotiations. That's why in that resolution they insist that Syrian government must, negoti must start negotiating. They forget that the main opposition group, which they all support, the so-called Terriyad group, uh, Nasser Hariri recently, the leader of this group, stated that the United States must continue to use force, not just in case of some chemical episodes, but against the Syrian government wherever and whenever the Syrian government opposes the uh, opposition. Some quick fire questions for you. First of them, do you believe that President Assad has won in this endless Syrian conflict? It is not about winning. It is not about Assad or his opponents winning. It's about the Syrian people getting a break from this disastrous eight years. And what is Russia's end game? I see you're sending more military uh, material and men into the Syria conflict. Is it your 
commitment now to back Assad all the way till he controls every inch of Syrian territory. No, it's, it's to protect the Syrian uh, Arab Republic from aggression, uh, which was launched on the 14th of April, and which the three uh, countries uh, say that they would continue. Are you going to send this latest sophisticated S-300 anti-aircraft missile to President Assad in Syria? Because if you are, the Israelis are going to be gravely concerned. Uh, President Putin addressed this issue uh, and he clearly said, reminded that a few years ago, at the request of uh, our uh, partners, uh, we decided not to supply S-300s to Syria. Now that this outrageous act of aggression was undertaken by the US, France and UK, uh, we might think how to make sure that the Syrian state is protected. To be clear, you're saying that what has happened in the last few days makes you reconsider and feel positive about sending those very sophisticated anti-aircraft missiles to Syria. It makes us convinced that whatever is required to help the Syrian army to deter aggression, we would be ready to consider. 500,000 people at least killed in the seven years of Syria war, 12 million people at least displaced, 5 million of them at least now living outside Syria. Do you seriously think that President Assad can ever unify his country, heal the wounds, be the ruler of Syria in any meaningful sense? We never said this. What we did say, Resolution 2254, it is for the Syrians to decide the future of Syria. New constitution, elections, let the Syrians decide. And uh, mind you that the uh, ongoing uh, efforts uh, to split Syria is very much against what people say formally and publicly. And when you speak about disastrous effect of uh, some uh, civil wars, don't forget what, uh, what shape uh, Iraq is in, what shape Libya is in, and those who did it, they now want to have Syria joining the club. I want to briefly turn to the case of Sergei and Yulia Skripal, who were poisoned in Salisbury in the south of England. In this interview, you've told me that credibility is important, that trust is important. You are the Russian foreign minister. You claim that the Skripal attack was mounted by British intelligence services who you, perhaps jokingly, I don't know, said are known for their license to kill. Do you expect that claim to be taken seriously? Look, when uh, we were told that uh, there is no other credible explanation but to assume that it was Russia which highly likely poisoned Skripal's, we said that there are other credible explanations. Well, yours isn't credible. Why? Why do you think so? You, have you got one shred, shred of evidence to suggest British intelligence tried to kill Sergei Skripal? Well, you know, uh, there is a, an old Roman uh, criteria, who is to benefit? And I believe the UK is grossly benefiting uh, from the provocations both in Syria and in the United uh, Kingdom itself. But ha hang on a minute, Foreign Minister. Britain is back, is back on, the, on, the, on the stage of world politics but, but Russia, in a very negative, in a very aggressive, in, in a very weird way. But, but, uh, th th but there's, an, what, there's a deep maybe... inconsistency in your position, if I may say so, Foreign Minister. In this interview, you've been at pains to tell me Russia is utterly committed to all of the international uh, commitments and conventions on chemical weapons, Absolutely. including supporting Absolutely. the work of the Organization for the Absolutely. Prohibition Absolutely. of Chemical Weapons. Absolutely. You know better than I that the OPCW has run tests in four different labs on the nerve agent used in Salisbury. All of them have concluded that that was a Novichok agent in a highly pure form as described by the British government. And that's the problem. That's the problem. First, the a234 agent uh, in highly pure form, in high concentration, is already uh, raises suspicions because this it came the, from Russia. This, it's quite clear this, it came from the former this, Soviet Union. You invented that particular well, wait, nerve agent, Stephen. You are not you are not factual. You are maybe hard talking, but you are not listening. 
this uh, chemical substance indeed was invented in the Soviet Union. Then one of the inventors fled to the United States and made the formula public. And if you want to check uh, before, before raising the issue, please do so. The United States patented this formula. Uh, and it was uh, formally taken by the United States uh, Special Services, so the Army, I don't remember. But 8234 is a very uh, uh, light, I mean, it acts uh, damage, uh, uh, very, it's, it seriously damage, a person kills it, kills him or her. But it evaporates very fast, and the sample taken two weeks after the event cannot, according by, by, yeah, our, it's, by it's, our scientists, to, to, to contain very high concentration. I guess it's all a question of credibility. What and you're second, telling me second, may be credible in Russia. It's certainly not credible around the world. You know, you've had more than 100 diplomats expelled you, from more you, than 20 you, countries. You, you, it's you, clear you, where you, the consensus lies. You want, Russia you want to, is seen you, as culpable. Okay, you, if you want to, to finish the, the, the issue of the, of the substance, uh, on Saturday we presented uh, a paper which contains the, literally the conclusion of the Swiss laboratory in the city of Spitz, which was one of the four laboratories, which did say that there was uh, traces of A234, very high concentration, but they also said that Either there you, was... you that trust the OPCW or you don't. It's quite simple. It seems you're now saying you don't you, trust the OPCW. For a breed, you have very bad manners. Uh, the Swiss laboratory report also said that... The, and in the first place, they found BZ, which was, I think, invented in the United States in 1955 and was uh, uh, used by the, uh, it was among the equipment of the U.S. and U.K. Army. And we asked OPCW, whom we trust, whether this is true or not, that in addition to A234, there was also BZ discovered. And we are waiting a reply from OPCW, whom of course we trust, but we won't trust and verify. We're almost out of time. I have to ask you about sanctions before we finish. Uh, the U.S. Treasury Sec Secretary is due to announce another raft of sanctions against uh, Russian companies and individuals who are deemed to have uh, contacts with the Syrian military. There are already, over the past few weeks, new sanctions from the United States on a whole bunch of different companies of individuals which have hit the Russian stock market very badly. Russia's being squeezed. Thank you for your sympathy. But don't, don't worry. We will survive. And uh, it's not it's Stock not market just, down 10 percent, ruble down against the dollar. You've, you've seen the, 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 the times which was uh, very troubling in the past when, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, George Soros uh, undermined your stock market and uh, dropped uh, the pound sterling very lowly. But um, it's not just these threats uh, to punish those who keep contacts with the Syrian government. It's a threat uh, which is we see uh, to punish the entire Russian people for making wrong choice during the elections. When they say that we would never target the Russian uh, men and women. We would only target the oligarchs, the politicians, the military who disturb the world. Uh, they are lying because their the, uh, uh, desire, as I see, as I see is to make uh, thousands and dozens and thousands and hundreds of thousands of Russians uh, disturbed. Uh, those who have been employed... But that uh, is Russia's vulnerability. The, those, yeah, yeah, yeah. You may have a national yes. of nuclear weapons that President Putin boasts about, and in fact he says that they're the most potent and powerful in the world today, but you have an economy which is weak and vulnerable. True, and we know this, and we know this, but this economy uh, has sustained uh, quite a lot, beginning from World War II, and I can assure you that the government and the president are very much uh, keen, you know, to make sure that the necessary reforms uh, taken through, and this was the uh, essence of the first half of the presidential message to the to the parliament. And his second part, when he informed his audience about the uh, new weapons delivered in Russia, he ended by saying, "We always are ready to talk, provided the talk is respectful and based on the looking for." balance of interests. And a final thought. The Secretary General of the UN, Antonio Guterres, said the other day 
The Cold War is back with a vengeance, but also with a difference, because now the safeguards to manage the risk of escalation are no longer present. That is a truly frightening thought. You've been foreign minister for 13 years. Is this the most scary time that you have lived through? Uh, the safeguards, um, this, one of the safeguards is uh, having normal channels. The channels between us and UK uh, have been closed by the British uh, with all agencies uh, fighting against terrorism. Between the military, it was dropped long ago by the initiative of London. Uh, NATO Russia Council, which was a very useful mechanism uh, to, to promote uh, confidence uh, and uh, transparency, was closed for all practical purposes uh, by NATO, who only wants to discuss Ukraine in that, in that body. And the European Union closed all the uh, avenues of cooperation with Russia, except talking to us on Syria and on. But do you on feel some you are in a, Do you feel you're in a new Cold War? Well, I think it's worse. Worse. <laughs> because during the Cold War, there were channels of communication, and there was not. Uh, there was no obsession with uh, Russophobia, uh, which looks like you know, uh, genocide by sanctions. You think the situation today is worse than the Cold War? Yes, because of the lack of channels of communication, except very few. That makes it very dangerous. Uh, I hope not only you, but uh, other compatriots of yours, including the government, re recognize this. And it's hard to imagine or remember a time when Russia looked more like a pariah, looked more isolated. You have the World Cup coming in the summer, which Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson, in a rhetorical flourish, said could be compared by some to Hitler's staging of the 1936 Olympics in Berlin. In 1938, uh, the UK team was playing against Germany in 1938, when 1936 was already past us. And uh, if you go to internet, you will see uh, a photo picture before the beginning of the game, when both the German uh, soccer players and the UK football players salute uh, by the Hitler, Nazi, uh, welcome. What's your point? I am not going to discuss Boris Johnson. We had a chat recently when he was in Moscow. Let him get fun. Sergei Lavrov, we're out of time, but I thank you very much for being on Hard Talk. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming, Stephen.